Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to 50 Question Friday. So let's see. We'll start with some questions from online here. And again, if you guys do have questions that you'd like to put in um, and you're live here, please do put them in the questions tab. And otherwise, um, yeah, you're welcome to send in questions through email. And let's see what we have. So this question is, I have acquired a house with a plot of land and now in the process of designing the remodel of the house. Can you enhance the energy of the house and the plot with tensor tools? Um, thinking of placing tensor rings under the foundation of the house or the corners of the property. Yeah, totally. Whenever we do anything here with um, any kind of new construction, you know, whether it's a shed or we're doing a concrete pad or whatever, we always put in rings, um, rings in a crystal grid. So basically we'll create a grid with the rings and we'll place them throughout this, the, the space where they're going to pour the concrete. So yes, um, it will help to amplify the whole space by having the tools, um, you know, there within it. So, you know, and two, we're getting ready to build a, um, a new building here this next spring and we're working on creating it with all sacred measures um, so that way the entire building is created with sacred measures so there is a lot that you can do if you are constructing a, a home or a space um, by using the sacred measurements because then it is going to hold space very well for you so let's see another question That one was a blank one. Okay, so here's a question. Can the copper tools, for example, the quantum healer, go in the shower on a daily basis without harm? Um, yes, you can totally take all the tools in water that can be in the shower. Um, you know, I love taking the different spheres and tools into um, pools, too, because it is clean and clearing the water as well as shifting the vibration in the water. Um, phenomenal thing to have the tools with you in water. Uh, they work very well that way. The only thing that does happen is they will patina, um, you know, and especially the quantum healer. The quantum healer in copper, especially the copper and the, the brass do patina very easily. Um, even the silver, the brass will patina. So, you know, any time that any of your tools patina, the copper is perfectly fine energetically. Um, it's only an aesthetic thing. And so if your tools do patina after taking them through the showers, um, you can just dip them in a solution of salt and vinegar, rinse them well, um, and that will take the patina off. Um, let's see. I believe that is all for the online questions. Awesome. All right. So let's see. And good morning, everybody that's on here this morning. Oh my goodness, you guys are from all over the beautiful world here. All right. So we got a question here. Um, what are considerations on placing the silver infinity amulet in water? Um, one, the placement of the silver alone, two, the sacred geometrical, sh geometrical shape of the infinity, and three, the combination of silver and the infinity symbol. So using the, the silver infinity, um, yeah, you can totally place the silver infinity in water. Now, the, the water rings that we create, the, the two-inch um, golden fire water ring, is really the only ring that we create that is completely 0.999 silver. Now the infinity is going to have a little, it's it's solid silver too, 0.99 silver, but the infinity has a little braze of a 75% silver, the rest is copper. So you're going to have just a very small, small amount of copper that will be within that silver infinity. It's not enough that we're seeing that that's going to leach out and cause any issues. It's not enough copper there. 
but it might patina. You might see that that little well turns green on the silver infinity, which is okay. Um, with the silver infinity, yes, you can totally put it into water. Um, and then the placement of silver in the water, of course, it does have a mic microbacterial, a microbial effect with the water, the silver does. Um, and then the silver with the infinity pendant. Um, so basically the, the infinities, the infinities, when you wear them near the heart, it is going to be connecting into the energetic heart, your physical heart. And it is going to be bringing your soul more into the physical, protecting the energy bodies 10 to 12 feet out. Anybody that comes within your field, it brings their soul more into the physical. That's just what the infinities are doing. Um, so then when you, we have the silver regeneration infinity, it is just a more potent infinity. It's, 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 you know, it's bringing through that blue light, that silver blue light that we see that is beyond duality. Um, so that silver infinity is pretty phenomenal. The regeneration one, the, the new illuminated heart. Um, so hopefully that answers your questions there, Donald. Um, let's see. Then we're going to go over here to the questions tab. Um, so Renard's asking, what's the best tool for connection to your higher self? Like communication, um, the pineal and the heart are the best tools for connection and communication. So we do make the tools, almost all the tools that we make are going to be helping you to expand the heart, bringing in more of a connection. Uh, through the heart to your soul and then the connection through the pineal um, is just it's it's just another way that we can see work with and talk I mean we we work with both together the heart and the pineal and so really um, for the tools that we create basically any of the tools that we create are going to help with expanding the heart helping you be in the heart and they'll also help with the pineal and the activation expansion connection um truly for the pineal the cosmic sun disc um i tell you this this has been pretty amazing for me the first time that i slept with the cosmic sun disc right above my head it totally felt like i sprained my pineal gland and that it grew like three sizes that night and i had been doing the work for a while before that so really the cosmic sun disc, if you want to really expand that pineal, bring in those higher torsion fields, that higher connection, this is a phenomenal tool for that. But really you can just do the meditation work um, to do the same thing. I mean, you're gonna get there either way. The tools are phenomenal for the assistance along the way, but really we can just, um, you know, Gosh, there's an old video out there on YouTube, the um, the pineal activation one that I did where I took like a, I think it was a harmony ring at the time, sat on top of the head and you meditate and you basically just do a visualization of that ring dropping down and settling around the base of the pineal. And then you take the physical ring off and you can still feel the energetic one around the pineal. That is also a great exercise and you can do with a simply an $18 Wi-Fi ring. So there's, there's a lot of ways that we can utilize the tools. Um, yeah, please consider that pineal activation one, but really just sitting, going into the heart, connecting, spending some time doing that every day is really a huge thing. Uh, John, would you use sacred measurements laying out in a garden and where does one find those sacred measurements? So no, you just wouldn't find a sacred measurement um, out in the garden the sacred measurements that were that were used um, to build megalithic structures all over the planets can be found with those structures like in the standard Teotihuacan unit that we use for the harmony ring that comes from the city of Teotihuacan and how far they space all of their sites that was one of the measurements used the STU um, one of the other measurements that was comes from the Great Pyramids, it was actually written above the King's Chamber there. Um, you know, so sacred measurements, we've seen, well, we've understood and heard that there were 64 sacred cubits 
that were known to man in this last cycle of civilization. So out of those 64 cubits that were known to man in this last cycle of civilization, um, we've only discovered like 19 of them and only like two of those make a working tensor field. So, you know, finding these sacred measurements, um, yeah, you know, but then the, the newer sacred measurements that Brendan and I have been working with come from geometries that are coming onto the planet at this time. Um, and the other one is even, I don't even know where that measurement came from, Slim, Slim Sperling and Pals brought that one for us. Um, but really, so yeah, you wouldn't be able to find them in the garden um, unless you have a pretty phenomenal sacred space garden that's based on ancient stonework. Um, so, you know, and then too, you know, John, a lot of people talk about making their personal cubit and the personal cubit is what they talk about, the length of the arm. No way you can get that to the hundred thousands of a centimeter and it's not even a working cubit measure. So people that are out there making the tools and that are making tools that are based on a personal cubit measure, they're going to work for them, but they're not going to work for anybody else that they hand them off to. It's that concept of creating tools of intention, but they're not the bigger tools. Um, so, again, the sacred measurements, um, you know, and there's a lot of people out there that are bringing forth sacred measurements. And, you know, and we've looked at some of them and we've seen a couple that work. But, um, again, you can create very very well on the intentional plane and create tools for you that are powerful. Um, what's the similarities and difference between the shaman's wand and the golden fire and light wands? Um, really the golden fire and light wands are the brass wands are connected to that higher dimensional tool, that ancient etheric tool known as the golden light rod. It will move geomagnetic lines, clear portal vortexes, um, clear realities, um, does a lot of phenomenal things. That's the one that we teach a lot of workshops on. Um, so that is that connected to that ancient theory tool. The shaman's wand is doesn't even contain the same frequencies. It works in all these different fields. So they're pretty much an apple and an orange, um, these two wands. Uh, Stephanie, and then please do, if you do want to find out a lot more about those two wands, please go to their product pages. Um, and then check out the information on their product pages as well as there are videos and especially a lot of videos for the Golden Fire and Light Wand. And then they'll walk you through some of the processes that we do and kind of connect you to the energetics. Um, hi, Stephanie, what is the energetic size and shape of a silver regeneration infinity, which I refer to as the illuminated heart? Um, so the, the silver illuminated heart, um, what is the energetic size and shape? So that, and I guess I'm not understanding exactly what you mean by the energetic size and shape of the silver regeneration infinity. Um, yes, it is expansive. Um, so I don't even have a, have a silver one on. But the the silver energetic, um, the silver illuminated heart is about an inch and a quarter long. Um, if that helps, so please do um, reformulate questions here for me if you need. Uh, let's see. And then here's a question: I have an eating disorder for fifty years, which you call miscreations. Can you please tell me what tool would be the best for me so I can release my pattern? Um, you know, I would really implore you to do the video from Brenda on our YouTube channel, which is the, um, the quantum heart activation. Um, when you go through that video process with Brenda, it's an 11 minute process. When you go through that, um, you are doing releasing of programs, belief structures, um, the traumas, not only for this lifetime, but for all lifetimes. And so really, I would say that I would do the consciousness work versus a tool for this situation. And actually, any situation, the consciousness work is really where it's at. 
the tools are phenomenal. The tools can do a lot of that shifting work that we do with consciousness work, but there's some things that just require that little bit of extra, which is doing the work. Um, and the work that I'm referring to again, you know, one of the best sources for that, that I can refer people to at this moment is that video, the quantum heart activation with Brenda, um, because it's pretty amazing on, on how it digs deep and does the clearing work. Um, let's see. And then Christopher with Eagle standing. I love it. Is the violet flame held in the harmony or golden fire ring templates? Um, actually, yeah, the violet flame is in the harmony. And which then it is in the golden fire too, the violet flame, because um, the violet flame as one of the rays of the ascended masters, we totally brought that into the etheric templates of the harmony rings. And then the etheric templates of the harmony rings also got transferred into the etheric templates of the golden fire rings. So yes. Um, and then Christopher asks, what is the current distance the golden fire generators reach? You know, I, I would be curious to hear what you're seeing with that, Christopher. Um, yeah, no, totally. I'm seeing that innately it is going out further, but it's kind of interesting because I'm seeing it as like it is expanding even further in the quantum realms, I do believe. And that's, and that's it is that, you know, when we talk about the regeneration tensor field generator, it's not about distance in this physical realm. It is about distance through the realms. And that's what I feel, Christopher, about that golden fire generator is that it is accessing more realms than what it used to. But our distance here in this physical realm does seem like it's larger as well. Um, but would love to hear what your thoughts are on that, Christopher, because I know you can see and you work with those fields. Um, okay, and then John, um, wasn't clear in my garden question. We're creating some new garden beds and I'm interested in using cubit measures to lay it out. Fantastic. Um, so the cubit measures, when you're creating your garden beds, totally using those cubit measures is a, is a phenomenal way to do that. Um, you know, there was those gardens in the UK, and the name slips my mind, but they have one of those giant Genesa crystals, the geometry that our tensor field generators are in the center of this garden and um and the way they lay out their garden it it enhances everything energetically so yeah you can totally use the cubit measures um what i would suggest is on sacredmeasures.com sacredmeasures.com is one of the websites where we shared all the previous cubit measures that we used up into the golden fire um, we've shared all those cubit measures on that website. So on sacredmeasures.com, um, I would take a look at either using the 333 megahertz. Um, the 333 ring is one that can be used in a straight line measurement or the STU, the standard TO2 econ unit, which can be used in the straight line measurement. So either one of those are what I would suggest making the, the beds out of. And to me, it almost feels like the 333 might be a better one, but you might want to mix them all in there together too. Um, and then anytime that you're cutting anything, like let's say you're using a, um, a trellis or, or even just a simple bamboo stick for whatever, for growing plants, um, cut that to a sacred measurement when you stick it in the ground. Um, truly using these sacred measures in our everyday world um, can hold a pretty phenomenal space. Uh, let's see, Carla, can you give some information on the Genesa crystal, how if it works and why it works? Um, certainly. So the Genesa crystal is this geometry. Uh, it was discovered by it was discovered by a plant geneticist, um, and he referred to it as the original eight cells of all things is what he considers this geometry, the Genesa crystal to be. So we see that when you make this geometry out of anything, it can be made out of reeds or a piece of copper pipe or, um, you know, Twizzler strings, the, the fuzzy wire strings, um, 
whatever you use, and it, they, don't, they don't have to be sacred measurements, whatever you use to make this geometry, it will then move energy. And I forget which way it is, but it moves out, I believe it moves out the triangles and in the squares or vice versa. But that's how the energy flows on a Genesa crystal, is that there is a constant flowing of energy. And then because of the structure, you can put intentions into it and it will amplify those intentions. Now, when we put, uh, when we make a Genesa crystal out of tensor rings, sorry, I'm showing my silver regeneration ball and no, this one's not for sale. <laughs> Love this little thing. The Genesa crystal, then, when we put it with tensor rings, instead of energy flowing in one, one in a triangle and out of square, or vice versa, it is basically shining energy out the entire structure and bringing information in. So this is a feedback device. Um, you know, it brings energy in, sends energy out, energy information, energy information. Um, and then when we put our intentions in there and use this as a broadcast device, um, but that's the basis of Genesa crystals and tensor field generators. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, so Stephanie, a quantum grid point will energetically expand into a pyramid to cover a house. So for a silver illuminated heart, how far will it ex ex expand? Thank you, Stephanie, for, for reverbalizing that question, which was about the, the silver infinity. Um, so basically, that silver infinity will, when you wear that on your body and it connects into your heart, it will expand your field out about 10 to 12 feet out in every direction is how big that expands your field. So that's about the size of a field that it co-creates with you when you're wearing it. Um, and let's see, we're gonna head back over here to chat again. <laughs> Yay, good to see all you guys here. All right, so here's some questions over on chat. How many items can I use at the same time? For example, I have the quantum healer, infinity, the infinity, the ring, and the bracelet. So basically, you can use as many tools as you wish at the same time um, because they're going to, all the fields and all the different things they do are going to harmonize and amplify with each other. Um, you know, I mean, we've seen that you can take two tensor rings and as you stack them, that increases their hate to use the words power and potency, but increases the potency of the field by about 23% when you add other rings to it. So really, if you are utilizing multiple tools at once, like I do, basically it is going to be just harmonizing everything that they do, and it will amplify things if need be. Um, and that, again, it's a beautiful thing about this tensor technology is that it is it's a smart technology in that it is working with the our higher consciousness so it's not going to bring through um, too much or anything that's uncomfortable um, you can never get too much of the tensor fields so you know even that's why kids and and those who are really sensitive to energies can you know that's how they can utilize these fields um, and then the, the second question, do these items have to be cleaned in a certain way and how often? And no, the, the tensor tools never need cleaned or cleared. Once that weld is sealed up, then you have this piezoelectric energy flow through the ring. This ring is then untouchable. You cannot, you, you can't touch the energetics of these tools. So they never need cleaned or cleared and they are room temperature superconductors. They will last for as long as this physical structure is together. Um, and that's, you know, and that's why we have a lifetime guarantee on the weld. So if your weld ever breaks, then we're happy to uh, do our work energetically, re-weld it, and then you have a ring that's just brand new. Um, so yeah, everything needs cleaned or cleared which is a phenomenal thing because then you can use it with crystals and you know all kinds of other energy tools to do the clearing work. 
Uh, how much time does it take for Organite Pyramid to work and how to care of it? Um, so basically, ooh, where did my, I don't have a quantum grid point sitting here. So the, the quantum grid points, the little Organite Pyramids, um, when you set it in the space, it's going to work instantly. I mean, it's, it's just as all the tools, they don't need activated. They're just going to be working as soon as you get them. Um, so when you, when you set that pyramid, that grid point into your space, you're just having the intention. And even if it's not the human based intention of what you want your space to be, the quality of the energy, whether it's for healing, creativity, productivity, whatever, when you set that pyramid there in your space, um, you can have your human based intentions of what you want that to be. But in reality, it is going to be working with your higher soul intentions when you set that pyramid in your space. Um, and it is going to be working instantly and um and how to care of it i'm not sure if i answered your question on that um please do re-ask if you need um let's see and then terry just i'm just reading comments over here in the chat um terry mentioned that she likes to stack her golden fire sphere on her tensor ring at night next to the bed not sure why i like it any comments and yeah Totally. Um, it's fun to play with the tools in that fashion of, you know, because if you have one frequency of ring and you put that with another frequency of generator, it's going to be bringing both frequencies through, um, you know. So, I mean, working with the tools in different ways is really a phenomenal thing to do because it it is an intuitive thing and you can never do harm with it. So, I mean, you can always find what you're drawn to and what works best for you just by that kind of play. Um, let's see, Marla, I've been adding crystals to the, to the pendants. <laughs> awesome. Do you have any favorite crystals for energy enhancement with your tools? Um, yeah, all my favorite crystals I'll wear with any of the tools. Um, I'll wear Laramar when I go to do shows just because it puts this nice watery field around me. It feels good and I'm out in the public. Um, then I've been working with these, um, these the, some new crystals that come from Mongolia that I've been wearing on a pouch today. It's the first day I haven't wore it in two weeks. Um, and then I put tools in with that crystal. So yes, anytime that I'm working with the crystals, I use the tools along with them. And just actually getting ready to set up a giant grid under my bed again now that I'm finally getting through this reset and starting to look forward to new creations. I want to set up a, a grid under my bed and I'm going to use some of my favorite crystals and some of the tools and lay it out and have the intention of, of everything that I want to bring through for myself for sleep, for healing for awakening, connecting, all the stuff for the remembering, you know, um, and really that's the way that it, that I began when I could not see was every night before I went to bed, I set those intentions of that I could have the understanding, the sight, the downloads, the activations to have that understanding and sight. Um, not sure where we got off on that tangent, but um, so let's see. Um, and yeah, Christopher, no, we haven't got our pyramid building going yet. It's, you know, this year has been a crazy year. So we're going to wait till the springtime and next spring and get our pyramid building going. Um, let's see. And then Christopher, do you have any tips or techniques on the ups and downs of expansion of being able to be so sensitive and aware at times and at others dropping back down in the closed and not seeing, you know, and so as, as our friend Christopher here from the UK is describing about, um, you know, how sometimes you're just so flipping sensitive to everything. And then other times you're just closed down, you know, to me, that's almost like those many dark nights of the soul where you have all these gifts and abilities. Then all of a sudden it's like you're closed for a reset 
and then you come through it and then you're more expanded and you have more sensitivities and gifts and abilities um you know and so to me that's just been the process over the past years is it it's just been the process and then sometimes it's it's a greater amount of time and sometimes it's just really quick um john asking about my vacation it was good so i'm pretty sure that oh yeah we did do a webinar and i need to get that uh uploaded on youtube but i did a webinar right after it came back in september from i spent a week in the redwoods and was tired of working 14 hour days seven days a week for years and um I needed to get away, so I took off with a friend in an RV and went to the Redwoods. And then as soon as I got home, I, that's when I had that. That's why I'm growing my hair out is because I've gotten all those staples in the back of my head. I got my my spiritual two-by-four in a literal sense after I got home and helped me with the reset. So, yes, John, um, <laughs> the vacation from life was really good but it was really the spiritual reset that when i got home and cracked my head um that things really started to shift um so yeah it's this beautiful world again uh let's see going back to questions here Let's see, can you suggest a way of making effective tools without soldering? I love to work with copper, but not good at soldering. Yeah, that's, you know, that's really it, Carla, is, um, you know, the soldering with using just um, map gas or with using just propane and trying to heat up and do a solder, it's tough. I can't solder either. I, it's, it's tough. And solders don't hold very well. So really, you know, you you really need to step into oxygen acetylene using like bronze or silver to do your brazing with. But if you don't want to get into the brazing, um, really any way that you make the ends of the ring come together, as long as the ends are touching, that's all you need. It doesn't matter how they're brought together. Um, you can get pretty creative. I see a lot of people out there making tensor rings that have little sleeves and little sleeves go on to where both ends stick in and then i think they'll use soldering from there or else some kind of resin but um that's a thought too um bernard i've been going through another awakening and it's been rough yeah i yes i tell you what um <laughs> it's it's been quite the time you know and going through all those little processes of of waking up, um, you know, because a lot of times it's, you know, for years I was having chakra migrations every year on December 12th, my chakras would migrate, heart would stop. I mean, gee, yeah, that's, that stuff literally kills you. And, you know, and then other times it's just, you know, like um, Christopher had said that you just become desensitized and you just feel mundane for a bit. And then all of a sudden you're opened up again. You know, so yeah, it, it's it's very individual how we are all going through all these things, but man, we are all going through it. And you know, really, we're finding that the regeneration tools, the regeneration rings are phenomenal for that. I tell you, I, the quantum healer for me, is one that I felt really helped me get out of my last big shift, which seemed to last like four or five months. Um, with a bunch of little ones in there, but one giant four month one. Um, Quantum Healer really seemed to be the tool that helped pull me out of that. Um, you know, and really that's what we're doing here is we are trying to make the tools and the processes to make this transition easier for everybody to bring things through with more grace and ease. Um, because can you imagine how everybody else who does not have the perception the the people to talk to all of that who are going through this stuff and have no clue about it um you know so so we're actually pretty lucky that we're all kind of aware and know what's going on as as we're going through it um anyway carla do you still give classes um yeah you know we've been doing 
uh, the holistic fairs have been opening up again. And so that's why um, we didn't do too many 50 question Fridays in November. I mean, sorry, <laughs> September. October is full too. This might be the only 50 question Friday we do in October because um, we have holistic fairs and other events that are rebooking for September and October. And so we're like double booked on a lot of these. So wherever I go, I'm doing workshops, um, Carla. So I'm not sure where exactly in the world you're at, but um, you know, right now we're just kind of doing the Midwest. But um, as far as workshops, I would really like to find some people to help with the workshop hosting. Um, let's see, I think it is on upcoming events on our website. There is a page uh, here in Atlanta. Perfect, Carla. I tell you what, once it gets really cold up here, I would love to come to Atlanta to teach some workshops. Um, so going back to what I was saying is I would love to find more people to help with the hosting of the workshops. And basically we try to make it a win-win situation that basically I give my time for free to go do the workshops, but I just need my way paid. Um, you know, so I mean, that's, that's one of the things is that trying to find the people to help co-create that workshop um, so that it is an incentive for them to, um, so yeah. Happy to go anywhere in the world. All right. So let me see. I think we might be all caught up here. Um, let's see. John, I'm involved in ecosystem restoration camp projects and wonder what your feelings are about the energetics of those sites and tools. I'll look into that, John. I'm not, nothing's popping up right now to look at, but um, I will put that in my Google search engine for restoration ecology. And I will take a look at that sometime. All right, so you know, we haven't been doing our meditations because I haven't been in a space to hold space for a while. But now I'm in a space to hold space again. How about we um, jump in? Yeah, please, John. Um, so, John, yeah, please do send me an email, Twisted Sage at Hotmail. And um, I'll certainly check out the ecosystem restoration camps and give you any feedback that comes up. Um, all right, shall we, you guys, jump through this? Oh, Bill, you said you got an error 404 on the upcoming events page. Hmm. Uh, luckily, our web guy, Randy, is on here, too, so he can take a look at that as well on the 404 error on the Twisted Sage upcoming events page. Um, yeah, and let me find out to where that link is for um, for our workshop hosting, because that's something that I'd really like to share as well, um, you know, as much as possible. Because love to get out there and do, and get some more workshops set up. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, I'd like to just take you guys and walk you through the simple process of. Um, accessing the field of neutrality. <clears throat> so usually um, you usually people are unable to access that field of neutrality until they've done some of that clearing work, clearing the programs. But let's just walk you here and see if we can get you into that space of neutrality if you have not done the clearings of programs. So to do the clearing of programs, that is again on that quantum heart activation by Brenda Schnoes on our Twisted Sage YouTube channel. Or if you go to the quantum healers or the quantum grid points on the product pages, that's also the video there of Brenda playing the bowl. She's standing right here um, walking you through that process. So um, if you've done that process, then getting to this space of neutrality is going to be simple, quick, and easy. 
Um, if you haven't done that process, just follow along and we'll still see if we can get you to that, that field of neutrality. When we bring in that field of neutrality and we get there, um, we go in the heart space first and then once we go to the quantum mind, the higher mind, then we go to that field of neutrality. Basically, when we get there, we're just um, opening up to bring that field into our body and that expands into our reality. So the more we can step into this space and just hold this space, this is kind of like, um, let's see, somebody referred to this as a new form of prayer, as a higher form of prayer. Um, that prayer has always been from here and from the human perspective and asking for higher power to do the work. And for this, the field of neutrality, we're seeing that we just go there and we channel that field of neutrality. We're the anchors for it and we bring it in and it goes out and it affects our world. Um, without us having to be conscious and aware from the human perspective. Because really from the human perspective, we don't want to direct it. We don't want to judge anything that we're even trying to work on from the human perspective. So when we go into this field of neutrality, um, we're just holding that space and we just know that that comes in and works in our entire world and reality, and especially on us. So when we channel in that field of neutrality, we bring that into the physical that can clear up a lot of things. Um, so here we go. So if you'd like to close your eyes, you can leave them open if you wish. And we're going to put our attention onto the physical heart. Within the physical heart is your light, your soul's fire. We just imagine using our imagination our intention our visualization we just imagine that light expanding more and then we imagine that light connecting to the light of earth so we're going to connect heart to heart to the earth awesome connecting heart to heart to the earth connect heart to heart to creation and we bring in that light of creation into the heart along with the light of the earth we take that third breath bringing both those lights together within you and as those lights expand your heart it brings your light through even more so just imagine your light expanding into every cell in between every cell Now we're going to do the sacred heart activation. So here we imagine our soul standing before us. Your soul may present as an orb or may it present, maybe it presents as this golden luminescent being. Maybe you don't see, but just know. So as your soul comes in and it touches your physical heart, it activates the sacred heart. Just letting your soul put its hand on your chest, activating the sacred heart. Awesome. Now we take that golden fire that's in the heart. We bring that up to the throat. And then we bring that golden fire right up to the pineal gland in the middle of the brain. And we just set that pineal gland on fire. Now we witness those infinities that are connecting the left and right brain, just connecting your brain hemispheres. And then that infinity goes upwards to the quantum mind, to your higher mind. And then we go higher to that field of all knowing beyond the mind. And then we go higher to that field of neutrality. And we just bring that field of neutrality into the body. And we just sit with that. All right, so you may choose to do this one again or else you may choose just to 
do the video that Brenda has. She'll walk you through the process. Most of you guys got this because most of you guys got there. This was just a reminder. And you guys are holding that field. And we're holding that field for anyone else who didn't get there. But again, if you watch that video with Brenda, she'll make sure that you get there. All right, everybody. Till next time. We'll see if we can have another one of these in October. Otherwise, we'll see you as soon as I can. Um, keep an eye out. There's a lot of other great things going on out there. We have um, some different um, webinars that we're doing with other people right now. We have new tools that are coming out. And again, we have a lot of local events that we're going to be doing. So, um, yeah. Good to see you guys. Good to be here. And we'll talk to you next time. All right. Take care.